Hello and welcome to another episode of the Peterson Automotive Museum Deep Dive Series. Today we're taking a look at the one and only 1969 Corwin. It's named Corwin after the fellow who financed the project, a very wealthy um, Japanese electronics importer. But the real brains behind this was a gentleman named Cliff Hall. Cliff, a very creative person who I had the tremendous fortune of knowing personally. He was a photographer for the LA Sentinel, Los Angeles's primary black owned newspaper. And he, he was a friend of everybody in the, in the industry. He knew an awful lot of people, had an awful lot of contacts. And those all came in real handy when it came time to build this car. Now, Cliff Hall had a dream of making an automobile viable for production in the Los Angeles area. What he wanted to do was give back to his community. He wanted a car that could be easily built in Los Angeles that could finance uh, the dreams of so many people who were under, underrepresented, who were, who were underserved in the community. But, but it was Cliff that really wanted to turn that around. And he thought, what better way of doing that than building an automobile? But this wasn't Cliff's first automobile because he had built little electric powered cars for his kids. Uh, that's the genius of Cliff. I mean, he was not only photography, but he was engineering and he had a big interest in, in having his kids enjoy the hobby as, as much as he was enjoying it. Um, so when it came time, Cliff, you know, just got tired of thinking about it and he said, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this happen. So he conceived the project in about 1965 and he said, LA doesn't need another gigantic car. Uh, the world doesn't need another gigantic car. Well, Los Angeles needs, because of its, its traffic problems and its, uh, its congestion at times, is something small, something rational, something nippy that can get around the corners and something that can uh, park in tight spaces and, and at the same time not use up a lot of gas, even though fuel economy wasn't really even a consideration back in the late 60s. So what Cliff did is he took this, this mirror, this, material that at the time um, was being used really only by Corvette, uh, fiberglass, uh, to build his car. And he, he scratch built the chassis um, frame, he designed the suspension system, he designed the body, which is really, really sleek. And I dare say if you put this in a wind tunnel, you're gonna get a pretty low coefficient of drag figure. The, um, the front has no, no air intake. There's nothing that gives the car a, uh, uh, negative aerodynamic advantage. Uh, except the fact that because the car's a prototype and because Cliff wanted to keep uh, weight to a minimum and keep complexity to a minimum, the car was never designed with windows. So um, the doors open without windows, but that's what sometimes you have to do with a, uh, an experimental car. You have to keep it simple. Uh, you have to keep it rational what you have to do is go for the main um, idea. You had to prove the concept first, and then you can add those things later if you decide that's what you want, if you decide the concept is the direction you want it headed. What, what Cliff did uh, is he envisioned, but not only envisioned, but also built a mid-engine, tiny little mid-engine car before the Pontiac Fiero, before the Toyota MR2, um, uh, about the same time as the Fiat X19. It was a very rational little car. And to think that he had designed this for Los Angeles. Now the Corman getaway was so unusual that as you might imagine, it made the papers. And it attracted some attention from a, a couple of very well known celebrities, uh, Muhammad Ali being one of them, Sidney Poitier being another one, Marvin Gaye being another one. In fact, Marvin Gaye thought that uh, if he were to contribute to the project, if he were to be able to finance it, it would be called the Corwin Panther instead of the Corwin Getaway. Kind of an interesting little, little term. But alas, Cliff wasn't able to get financing for the car, and so it remained a one-off prototype. But not in this configuration. 
Initially, it was painted silver and it had round headlights. And then Cliff decided later on, well, let's bring it up to date a little bit. Let's give it square headlights. And by in doing so, it kind of had the, a little bit of the look of the Avanti, uh, the Studebaker Avanti that debuted in 1963 without really I intending to. But this is Cliff Hall again. This is a creative genius who, who managed to emulate Raymond Lowy, one of the world's most respected designers, uh, in a way that I don't think he was intending to do. Um, so what he ended up with um, was in the second iteration was a car that he repainted from silver to black, uh, gave it square headlights to better be in with the um, spirit of the, of the 19, uh, late 60s and early 70s, which is where uh, the design trend seemed to have been going at the time. Cliff Hall still had this car when the Peterson Automotive Museum was opening in 1994, and he actually approached us with an offer to loan it for us to put on display. It didn't take long for us to agree that this is exactly the kind of thing the Peterson Automotive Museum should be celebrating, and for a lot of reasons. It ended up in our Customs and Coach Belts gallery where we show the means and the extremes of all different kind of quirky vehicles and a lot of people that went through that gallery initially could be forgiven easily forgiven for thinking this is you know just another modern car just another um, prototype from a major manufacturer when in reality it wasn't at the end of that exhibition we were obliged to give it back to Cliff, uh, but we did so hesitantly. We liked it a lot, but, but Cliff took it back and he eventually stored it uh, in a garage in Blair Hills, right next to um, a, a community adjacent to the mid Welshire area, about 20 minutes away by car, um, maybe 10 minutes away by this car. And he ultimately said, you know what? I want the Peterson Automotive Museum to have this car. So Cliff called us. He said, you know, Leslie, this is, this is something I want the museum to have. This is something that I think you need. And we couldn't have agreed more. Um, Peterson Automotive Museum prides itself in collecting vehicles that were built, bodied, or conceived or designed in, in Los Angeles. Again, an area where some of the world's most creative people live and work. And among those creative people, Cliff Hall was a standout. Thank you for joining me in this episode of the Peterson Automotive Museum Deep Dive Series. Hope to see you next time.